Okay, my friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, with apparently, I'm being told, this is a worldwide phenomenon. They're seeing these webs of light everywhere. Nobody can understand what's going on. And they flip around like this, and they bridge from the ground to light sources and all kinds of things, different colors and flashing webs. Now, the only thing it does explain it is electron flood theory, which says, and I have, if, you, if you've been following me, you probably already know what this is. This is electron plasma. And what that means is in the air, there's a ton of extra electrons, which normally would not be just floating freely in the air. They would have come to the earth slowly, you know, sort of... You know how you touch a water pipe and electricity goes into the ground? Well, it always is migrating towards the ground. However, in this case, there's a ton of extra electrons in the way. So the electrons coming down to get to ground are bashing into these, creating these lights. The, the different colors are because the light's coming up at them. The, the only reason you're getting these glowing up here is because we're sending off light out from the Earth. And wherever the light comes up from the earth, it's bashing into the light coming down, and the two of them hitting together create colors. The color of the emitter is going to predict the color of the crasher. So the crasher coming down is either going to be white or blue or green or red or whatever color it is, depending upon how hard it's being hit coming up this way. So let's let's follow this through. It's electron flood theory. It's the only thing that explains it. And it says that there is nothing that exists other than electrons. Now watch what happens here. This is this is not a stagnant picture. This is people driving, see the cars are driving, and it, it'll start to flip. The webs will start to flip around. It's it's very hot. See this buses driving and everything. There it's getting charged up now. It appeared that at one point it wasn't so highly charged, and now as it goes further and further through, see now the wet, there's a cloud coming through here, and that cloud is electrons. You see, there's green lights and blue lights and white light, white webs. They're all different colored webs, and it it depends on what the emitter is. Let's come down here. Look, you see, whoops. That, these are webs. They look like, boy, I had, there were some really great shots, and I'm not getting them here. All right, here we go. Here's some great web shots. Now, you see how these are flashing? There's just a huge source of electrons in the air, and it seems like there's so many that it, it's almost like like a Tesla coil is putting them out or a Van de Graaff generator or something is just spitting out tons of extra particles into the air and they're getting crashed. You see the colors? And the different webs? And they're really starting to grow now as this thing, this goes on for an hour and five minutes, six minutes. Look at that. And that's real. That's not, that's not a fake picture. These are actual transitions of electrons literally from red to yellow to green to blue that is the that is the spectrum it's just, this is phenomenal it's absolutely phenomenal and it's charging the atmosphere right now extreme charging of you know, the atmosphere you see this is pushing them back up push 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 all, all of a sudden it pops up green again and I saw one company out the other day popped up green just like that in the middle of a field during a lightning storm. And I'll show you that. But this is real. This is not somebody's joking around. This is absolutely certainly real. And um, she tries to explain this is all UFOs and so forth. It's not. It's an, it's an accumulation of excess electrons in the air. So whatever's pushing up against it, you see how they're green and blue and red and all these different colors? Whatever's pushing up against it, is, it this is why it's so continuously non-variant. It, the stuff coming down seems to be coming down. Well, here's, look, see, it's growing here. So more is hitting here. It's starting to grow more energy at that spot. You see it? 
but but what you want to think about here is why would that be so consistent well here's why the light coming up from the ground is consistent it's not changing this light coming down yes you're changing the, the electrons are flooding in here but right now it's so saturated with electrons that you can see the various color transitions it's very very obvious to somebody that understands electron flood theory which is me <laughs> you see where it is pouring out of there wherever that thing is there's a source of electrons pouring out from wherever she's not I wish I could get over there another inch or so and see what's co it's coming out of this area here forcing electrons into this you see them pouring out of there I'd love her to just get, 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 please it, boom so many that it turned yellow uh, green I wonder what the hell is over there come on move the camera <laughs> uh, we're not gonna find out what the source is but whatever it is, it keeps pushing more. Now it's turning red. And it, as it keeps pumping, 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 please turn the camera over there. <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to see where it's coming from. But there's no question. It's coming out of there. And, and it keeps feeding more and more in. And as more and more in, it changes the color patterns. But by the time it gets out here, this is where it's really impacting. That is just phenomenal. I wish I could find out where that started. Let's see, she started over here somewhere. Hold on, maybe we can find it. Oh, oh, there. That's as close as we're going to get. Let me come back there one second. This is what research is all about. It takes forever to do this. All right, so here she is. She's coming over. and But all this, look, see that? Look at them popping up. Look at that. Now, where, see the green and all these different colors? This has some kind of emittive source that when it reacts with these electrons coming in it's green and we saw all these different colors now let's see if we can see where that source was coming all right i'm going to go real slow here oh, oh. all right here it is this is where the emitters are appears that are flowing over there up to make all those colors let's yep that's where it's coming well or it's coming out of here but it's it's coming right up from here and that's the source of all these colors see you can see them pouring in it's over here we're not going to see any better than that Oop. It's wherever it is, it's coming out of here. Now, what does that mean? It means something is pushing electrons in. Well, what would that be? A light, a transmitter, a uh, Tesla coil, a Van de Graaff generator, a light source, an electron pushing source of something. And these are the electrons pushing in, and they push, they push back to the shovers. Now, let me show you what we did, and I can show you a very similar sort of situation. Okay, don't forget, this uh, video was from Gina Maria Colvin Hill, and it's Web Plasma in Dublin. Now, this is an electronic fog. Normally, you have a weather system move in. This is very, very unusual. I would like to know what the humidity level was, all that kind of stuff, what the weather, weather conditions were. I didn't see any, you know, lightning or anything in the background. All I saw was an excessive amount of electrons in a cloud, literally. Now, so don't forget, Gina Maria Calvin. Now, let's look at this one for a second. This is by um, NewsLeak. And I, I saw this, a ton of different channels have this up. But here's what happened here. 
there was a ton of electrical activity, all kinds of electrical activity going on in the atmosphere, lightning, and that's what you normally see. And then, all of a sudden, from this extremely bright light, a green layer showed up here, which is, I understood exactly what was going on. There were so many electrons in the air that would normally be coming to the Earth. This light is so bright that it pushed back and stopped them head to head. All right, And they're trying to do this in research now to stop light. And that's exactly what's happening there. That is light stopping. Here it goes. Watch this. And they heard an extreme, spoop, there it goes. They heard a screaming sound, pow, and there it goes. And it stays there. And they were freaking out. You see the lightnings going on, all kinds of things going on. That is the pushback to that. See, this is what they're trying to do, bring atoms to a standstill. Well, we're working with photons. Atoms are thousands and thousands of times bigger than photons. All right, here's what's going on at CERN. They're going to start trying to f do what we are doing, which is the photon colliding. We crush them, and they, they had done this by accident. They came together and forced a boson, which we have done on purpose. Now, coming down here, it says, uh, well, the collisions are very clean. We're colliding photons, which are elementary particles, not composite ones like protons. Listen to this. Wait till you hear how many particles they're using. We're using two particles. They're using, they're circulating a bunches containing a hundred billion particles. And to them, a particle is an atom, a proton, which is 1,837 times bigger than what we're using. So it multiplied a hundred billion times 1837 and that's the particles they're digging through after they have their explosions. We're digging through two particles and we can find exactly what we need to find instantaneously. And it didn't cost a whole lot of money. Okay, so they're digging through a hundred billion particles. We're using two. The case for studying photon collisions. They never could do it because they didn't know how. It says they were talking about this topic, very interesting, for decades, had special meetings about it, and um, in um, 1978, the, and um, nothing ever happened. They just never did it. So these collisions are very clean as we're colliding photons, which is like two particles, elementary particles, not composite ones like protons, thousands of times bigger. And then they're shooting 100 billion at a time. Um, this is a spokesman for uh, CERN. It was first proposed to do this type of physics at the Large Hadron Collider with CERN many years ago, but the project didn't materialize. They didn't know how to do it. We did it by accident. We didn't go out searching to do this. Rodney Warren did it by accident. I saw what he did. Nobody knew what he did, and nobody paid any attention to it. They just thought it was a bunch of little flashes on the screen. It was impossible to see any of this stuff. I realized exactly what it was instantly as soon as I saw what he was doing. And since then, I've been trying to get this understood. And it should be understood because this is the reason our atmosphere is in its condition right now, is electron flooding. That's the theory. Okay, this is, uh, this is ex exactly what happened with that green light popping up. Extremely bright light right here in the middle of that field. Here's the Earth. You've got all kind of lightning going on because it's saturated with extra electrons. They're trying to get to the ground with lightning bolts and everything. You know, all they are is electrons, and they're just saturated here. That's how lightning forms. Now, this guy said, whoa, 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 I'm sending up rays against your rays, and they literally bang heads, and that's what happens. You get pushed to shove, and instead of getting red or green or white or blue, it's a red, a green frequency. And I'm going to show you, we have these frequencies. We have red, we have green. They're both exactly the same electrons. No difference, it's just that one is more excited than the other. That's all. And here's how I can say there's particles coming down, crashing from the sun down through the atmosphere. They are hitting water molecules. But we can see the Higgs fields. You see them? These are white Higgs. These contain every color in the rainbow. 
You see that? That's a vapor layer. Now, here's what's happening. Here's your white. That's the impact impact. Then you have your your red, blue, green, red, blue, green, and then the blue sort of stops because it's so impactful. It's already crashed into something, creating all kinds of showers of electrons. But the the red and the green is a little longer, so it takes a little longer to hit something. That's why you see this. And I can prove this to you with another shot. This shot, if you look at it carefully, the sun is up here. He's put his finger right up here. And the, the sunlight hits. The Higgs field hit there, and it literally twisted it. You see it twisting here? Now, you can see the blue, green, red, blue, green, red. And then it goes longer, longer, longer. The, the blue gets sucked up quicker because it's more impactful. Uh, it's spinning much faster. Here's the deal with the frequencies. All right, what you have is a particle. Hold on, let me get my stuff together. Here's what we have. What you have is is an electron, and this is where it is. This is exactly like this, and it's spinning down towards the Earth. And he put his thumb up here, and it hit it, and it's whoa, and it bounced away this way. But in the meantime, they give off their energies in frequencies of impact. The quicker, that, so in other words, if you're down here spinning in the blue range, bam, 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 you're done. If you're here in the green range, and you go a little further before you hit something. If you're here in the red range, you're sort of loop a boop a boop a boop a boop but finally you hit something. Basically, that's what light is. And light is a bouncer. They talk about string theory, this and that. Light, let's go with spring theory. Because here's what happens. Light is nothing more than a, a spinning particle. And out in front of it is the magnetic range that it influences. So it creates a wave in front of it. They always call it wave-particle duality. Well, yeah, the particle forces a wave to be created in front of it as it spins. So the wave comes out, it pushes all the particles in front of it away, so you have a wave and you have a spinning particle. Shown it a million times. All right, I am not gonna honk my own horn, or I guess they call it blow your own horn, but uh, I've heard it both ways. Now, I, di I did this stuff, I mean, and you can see that I didn't stop doing it, I've done it forever. Now. And I always had problems. I said, no, you, you guys are not right. You're not right. I went through so many calculations, so many things to show that it's, you know, I, I understood what they were saying. Let me put it this way. I didn't just jump and say, no, you're not right. You're not right. I figured out that they're not right because they weren't right. It was as simple as that. They weren't right. And I, I went through all the dipoles and, you know, I mean, I, I, this is serious stuff. This was not just a 15-minute guess of, you know, this and that. I looked at all of the different ways that molecules attach, and I, they were right about a lot of stuff. I have no issue with, once you get outside the nucleus, they're not completely wrong, but they don't understand how, what an electron's made out of, and they don't understand so much, it's just incredible. And this is 50 years ago. Now, what, this is the thing I'm most proud of. It goes on and on and on. I mean, I, all this stuff, this was not, this was not easy. All right, I'm going to show you because I'm proud of it, and who the hell cares? I'm bragging. I did all this stuff, and I kept going, and I kept going, and I kept going, and I kept going, and I got to the point where I said, you guys aren't right. Postulates of Bohr theory calculate given electron from the nucleus. This, how can you get an electron from the nucleus? Then I came up with this. Transfer of energy from light is to atomic vapor. Exactly. They're, at, they're electrons. Light is electrons. And then I went down to a nice... I, I ended up coming up with this. If electrons can have any energy, that's, they're called anions now, and this is 50 years ago. I said the electron can have any energy. It can absorb any wavelength, so therefore it can have any energy and move any distance away from the nucleus because it can have any energy to push and shove to the nucleus. Therefore, Rutherford's atom was wrong because that would give no light. <laughs> I was, I was, I fought everybody. But, you know, how can you fight them in that, in that, in that uh, arena? 
they're the ones that are the heroes and they just tell you to go away. Well, 50 years later, I'm back. <laughs>